is Madden NFL 24, and it's presented by EA Sports. It's the Washington Commanders and the Seattle Seahawks, coming up next. We are just south of Pioneer Square here in the great northwest city of Seattle at newly named Lumen Field, home of the 12s. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one in the NFC, as it'll be the Washington Commanders taking on the Seattle Seahawks. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, this was a team after the Russell Wilson trade that looked like they might be bottoming out. But for years, the Seahawks have had great success in the NFL draft, as you well know. And they've used the last few drafts to really restock this roster. And they certainly have restocked this roster and have gotten back to playing football the way that they want to do it. Seahawks football, which means running the ball with authority on offense. They've added runners, offensive linemen, and now they're just being forceful in the way they're going about their business, the way that they did it when they ran the Super Bowls. Meanwhile, for the Commanders, this is a team that many think could be the fourth best in the NFC East, but they've got a pretty strong defense that's going to probably keep them in some ball games. Their investment in town has certainly paid off. Number four against the pass a season ago. Number four overall in total defense. Nothing to shake a stick at. If they get good quarterback play, look out. Here's the kicker, Jason Myers, to get this one started. And off we go from Seattle. And the opening kickoff will not be returned, as that will be a touchback. The commander's set to go to work on offense, and they've handed the controls to this man in his second NFL season, former Tar Heel Sam Howell. Howell got the nod for commander's leadership to be the team's starter this year. A nice bump for last year's fifth round pick. One start as a rookie and didn't look bad at all winning the team's finale. And let's not forget, this is a guy who was once viewed as a first round pick. So there's plenty of promise hidden beneath the surface. Now the second year man from Alabama, it's Brian Robinson. And a missed tackle there as he pushes forward for a gain of four. Well, we all know the guy carrying the ball is going to get the credit, both in the stat line and probably in the newspaper. But guess what? Those guys creating holes, they couldn't feel better about themselves right now. Offensive line, tight end, probably even the wide receivers are involved. They're moving the ball well. They'll go play action. Howell. Short throw here to the tight end, Bates. Call it a gain of three on the play. And just like that, it's third down. Faking the handoff, Howell. Able to find the open man, that's complete. He's to the 15. Touchdown, Washington. Terry McLaurin, 68 yards. And the Commanders march right down the field in three plays to claim the early advantage. Well, they said that they wanted to get him involved early, and what a way to cap their opening drive, Charles. We know he's one of the fastest receivers in the NFL, and he showcased it on that play. And when you have a guy like that, you want to make sure the defense sees him early, right? You want to see how they're going to adjust, how they're going to try and guard him, because they can't replicate his speed in practice unless they've got one of the few guys who are as fast as he is. And all it took was one drive, he burned them, and I don't think it's the last time they called his number in this one. Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. DJ Dallas to return it from his end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. So the Seahawks ready to take over on offense. And it is a first-time Pro Bowler who leads him out, Charles, in his 11th year now, Geno Smith. When the Seahawks named Smith the starter last season, 
It gave him an opportunity he wasn't sure he would get again. And then he became one of the best quarterbacks in football and sustained it across a full 17 games when he come back player of the year. Saved his career with last season and keeps the Seahawks as true contenders. Now Gino on first down. He completes this to Walker. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion that we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so our offense has to be ready each and every time to either equal or try and get us ahead and try and keep us ahead. This is their chance to respond to that first touchdown given up. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field and it's popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. From the gun on third down, Smith. Looking for Lockett, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Benjamin St. Juice. Now the return here is stopped at the 35-yard line. Oh, Brandon, this is a veteran quarterback back there. He should know better than to make a throw like this. This is definitely not his best ball, and I think he knew this was trouble the second it was leaving his hand. The commander's going to retake the field for drive number two, and they'll have good field position here following the interception and a chance to build on their lead as they start with a first and ten. They'll throw on first down. Here's Hal. This will be caught at Samuel. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. They get 17 there. Good for a commander's first down. Well, as a coach, you absolutely love seeing your offense find their rhythm early. And that's exactly what we've seen so far. They had a touchdown on their opening drive. And now they connect here for another nice gain for a first down. This offense is moving the ball well, exactly as he drew it up in practice. Touchdown, Washington. Logan Thomas, an 18-yard touchdown grab. And the Commanders are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. They've got to be thrilled on the road right now. Touchdown, turnover, touchdown, and quickly trying to make it 14 to nothing. Yeah, and mentioned it already. On the road, to be able to go into someone else's house and establish a start like that, Obviously, your confidence rises in a big way, and you're putting some doubt in their minds. The extra point by Sly is up and good, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. The long touchdown pass gets him six on a very, very tidy two-play drive that time. Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. This fielded right at the goal line. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive. And Charles, it's kind of gut check time. Look, I know it's early first quarter, just their second drive of the game, but they've already thrown the interception given up the score you're down double digits they got to figure out something and pretty quickly here no doubt about it and when we look at that sideline i'm sure you're observing the same thing i am i don't like the body language at all they look like they're in a state of stunned disbelief so to me we always talk about someone stepping up and making a big play i think it would behoove them if multiple guys step up and make big plays right now they need something positive to happen and they need for it to happen now give him four yards there on the first down keeper 
Well, if you're going to run the read option, typically, you've got to keep an eye on the defensive end. And what does that mean? What are you looking for with a defensive end? Well, you want to play off of what he does. If he collapses inside towards the running back, then you pull it and take it yourself outside in. If he stays outside, you go ahead and leave it with the running back. In this case, pulled it and got good yardage himself. Yeah, boy, here's a sight you don't want to see. Ken Walker injured on that last play. Well, hopefully, obviously, nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, are going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. A yard all they need, but it's third down. On the give here, Charbonnet. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. I like his focus there because he wasn't thinking about breaking that one big. All he thought about was, I need one. Let's go get that. Ended up picking up two. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Out right to Smith and Jigba. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. Right about 20 yards on the pickup. Well, officially, they'll say it's going to go for 19. That's probably as simple of a throw as he'll have all game. And good for everyone. Good for his completion percentage. Good for the receptions for the receivers. But you know how they work on that. They have footballs with no laces. So that as soon as you get the snap, you're just throwing the football, all right? You're not trying to find the laces and grip it a certain way. That takes time. Just get the ball and throw it. So that's how they practice it all the time now, too. Now a throw complete to his fullback out of the backfield. So give him two yards there on the completion, and it'll be second down. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield, and oftentimes it's quite a surprise to the guys playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. From the 43, here's a second and eight. Out of the gun, Smith. He'll get that to Charbonnet. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. A yard in the wrong direction makes third down tougher. Third down and nine. But well, looked like the defense, they were ready for that one. Really left him almost no room to work after catching the ball. He could throw every move in the book at him. They were there, and they tackle him for a loss. Throwing again is Smith. Open man is Metcalf. He's got it. And they're going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at Washington's 31-yard line. 14 yards that time for number 14. But we're used to seeing the guy that you consider the number one receiver double covered. But how about this guy? He's double covered and finds a way to make the play for a first down. That's how you increase your Madden rating, right? No doubt about that at all. And you know something? I think we'll hear about that from him soon. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. An awful lot of congestion in the middle third of the field. But how about our defensive tackle right there? He just hold the line. He provided some push and smacked the ball carrier down for a loss. Geno out of throw. Over the middle, that's caught by Metcalf. And they're going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at Washington's 20-yard line. 11 more yards there. This methodical drive continues. From the red zone now, Smith. And his throw is incomplete. Down here in the red zone, you know your tight end is going to be a favorite target. Couldn't hang on. And sometimes they just have to get out of their own head because they understand how tight windows are there and how many bodies are there. And sometimes they just overthink it and don't catch the ball. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. And now a handoff to Charbonnet. This will be a five-yard pickup as they move it from the 20 to the 15. Here is third and five.
from the gun. Here's Smith. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. Myers' kick is good, and they will get themselves on the board here at 14-3. So unable to convert for the touchdown inside the red zone, but they do come away with three. Yeah, it's a 32-yarder. That's essentially an extra point nowadays, right? Because it's 33 as a general rule for these guys. So it should be a simple kick. But you know what's really strange nowadays? When they miss an extra point, I think they carry that with them longer than missing a field goal because an extra point is supposed to be automatic. Absolutely, and I would think even field goals inside of 30 yards, even though they're substantially shorter than a PAT, it, would, it just has a different feel, doesn't it's it? a different feel, a different vibe. That's what I get from all the kickers I talk to. They always say, if I miss an extra point, that's the one that bothers me more. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30, up to the 33. And the Washington offense heading out. Well, this offense looks like they have a little extra pep in their step as they take the field here for drive number three. Because remember, Charles, drives one and two both ended in the end zone. Yeah, and right now they've just got to be careful not to lean into overconfidence because every drive has a life of its own. But I like the way that they've started, the way that they're going about doing things right now. They've got a chance for that third consecutive touchdown, and that would be a crushing blow to the defense. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Well, not that we had any questions, but it's obvious his arm does not hurt today, does it? He does not mind slinging it around. He is firing that pigskin around the yard. Yeah, put it deep downfield, taking shots. Unsuccessful there, but I like his moxie. Second down and a run by Robinson. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Officially nothing on that one, no gain, so they're left with still 10 to go on third down. Those are the plays this defense needs with the deficit they're facing. It certainly is, and they've got to continue to swarm the football and hope that someone, while they're holding up the ball carrier, can get in there and rake it and lock it free. They need to get some takeaways as well. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. They hit that crossing route really well. Excellent timing, puts it right on him, and he keeps running. Yeah, turned it upfield for good yardage. Hal to the air on first and 10. And his throw's gonna be incomplete. Thomas the intended target, but it'll be second down. Robinson up the middle. And a strong run there as he'll take this all the way down to the 35. 10 yards there, good for a Washington first down. Nothing too fancy, just a carry up the middle, but a successful carry up the middle against this 3-4 defense. And to be able to do that, what do you have to control? The nose guard, right? Got to be able to move him, otherwise you're not getting anything up the middle. Nice job by the center. Got a little help from one of his friends playing guard. Short throw here, the tight end Bates. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. It's a gain of nine. Brings up second and a yard at the Seahawks 26 yard line. Second down and a little more than a yard here. Now how? Short throw to the tight end Thomas. He had the touchdown earlier. This one's going to get him a first down. Now they go play action with Hal. And this one almost intercepted. 
had a chance to come down with it in the end zone, but could not hang on. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it, and oftentimes, knock it away. Off play action, it's Hal. Middle of the field, it's Robinson. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Well, the play fake, and now here's how to throw it. Looking and finding Thomas in the end zone. Touchdown, Washington. Logan Thomas, a beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Commanders are able to extend their lead. Boy, still in the first quarter, and look out. I mean, they are on pace for over 80 points in this game. I don't know that they'll get there, CD, but this has been impressive to watch so far. That certainly would be history in the making, wouldn't it, partner? I'm glad we're here to actually watch and see if it actually happens, although, like you, I have my doubts, but they are firmly in control of this game. Extra point by Sly is up and good, and the lead is up to 18 now. Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Seattle again getting ready to take over offensively. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Tyler Lockett was the target there, and that'll bring up second down. now with Charbonnet trying to bounce it outside but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage no gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge third down and ten back to throw Smith Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. A nice chunk play from the tight end position, and it illustrates the cohesiveness that he and his quarterback have. Both saw the extra defender doubling him up, and they still combined for the completion and big gain. On first and 10, it's Charbonnet. And he is going to lose yardage here. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Twenty-one to three is your score after one. Second quarter now from Seattle, and it is the Seahawks with the football here as they've got it second down and 11. Now Gino. And the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down.
They'll fake the handoff. Now Smith. Targeting the out route, and he completes this to Metcalf. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. Now that's the kind of big play you'd like to see. This first half, it hasn't gone their way, and they could use a shot in the arm, something to perk them up a bit. And they get one here in the passing game. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. On the carry, Charbonnet. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. A quick throw out to Lockett. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. This offense so far on third down, they've converted three out of five thus far. Here it's third and two. Now Smith. And that is incomplete. The commander's defense holds, and that'll bring up fourth down. Sometimes it's just not your day. There's another failure right there on third down. The offense staying out. They're going to go on fourth and two. They'll run for it with Charbonnet. And he's going to have a first down here as he gets this one to the 17-yard line. They're able to keep the drive alive seven yards that time, and the decision to go for it proves to be a good one. Remember, that was fourth and a full two yards. There's a big difference between that and fourth and maybe six inches or a yard. Yeah, you're exactly right, because when it's that six inches, you just fall forward and you pick it up, right? You just go quarterback sneak. But having to move bodies, that means you actually have to execute because they know what you're going to do. How are you going to make the right play call and get everyone into the right spot and win at the line of scrimmage? That's what they did there. This is second and eight. Throwing now is Gino. Left side here, taken in by Metcalf. So five yards here, five on the play. And now it's third and three. Here's Smith. That is caught. And the Seahawks are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. But with the score where it is, you're not thinking field goals right now. You need touchdowns. So that was a much-needed conversion there on third down. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Throwing is Smith. Touchdown, Seahawks! Tyler Lockett, a five-yard touchdown. And the Seahawks get a bit closer. That's an old-fashioned death march there, partner. Took them a lot of plays, but hey, they did the job. And the defense always preaches getting off the field, making a play and turning it back over to their own offense. Unable to do so. A long, sustained drive by the offense. Jason Myers now for the extra point. It's up and good, and the lead is down now at 11. It's 21 to 10. That one was an extended drive, 14 plays all told, and it ends with a Tyler Lockett touchdown.
shot. Here's Myers to boot it away. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. Washington ready to try again on offense. Right now, everything they touch turns to gold. This is their fourth possession. Touchdowns on their first three possessions. I mean, this defense, they can't seem to stop them. It's like they're on skates. Great analogy, Brandon, because they are pushing them back and winning everything at the line of scrimmage. They've just been laying down tracks towards the opposite end zone. So to themselves, all they're saying is, if we don't make a mistake, there's no way they can stop us. On first down, Hal. That's out wide here for Robinson. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six. And that's going to bring up second down. A six-yard pickup brings up second and four. At the 31-yard line. Back to throw, Howell. That's complete to his receiver, McLaurin. And McLaurin gonna pick up a commander's first down as he'll be brought down at the 38-yard line. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Howell out of the shotgun. Seahawk defense gets to him and they bring him down. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Traditionally, as a defense, your number one job, stop the run. But in today's football, it's impacting the opposing quarterback. Make him uncomfortable. And so far, they've not been able to do that. Not at all. He's been really comfortable in the pocket. Three touchdown passes already. So that could be an important first sack if they do want to turn things around. Under pressure, they got him again. Books is a seven yard loss on the sack, and it's third down. Okay, let's go back a little bit and see if my schooling comes to the front. What's that old saying? Those who forget the lessons of history are doomed to repeat them. That's the same guy who's gotten back to back sacks. I think a double team may be in order. He's got his target. That's complete. Down the left sideline. Touchdown, Washington. Terry McLaurin with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Commanders are able to widen their advantage. What a first half he is compiling here. He's already over 100 yards receiving and now two touchdowns, CD. Brandon, you know I don't like to play the game where you start projecting when you're at a certain point. But let's face it, he's off to a tremendous start. So 200 yards, four touchdowns. I don't think anything's out of the question right now. He's blowing up coverages. You've got to double him every snap. Otherwise, he's going to defeat you on almost every play. Extra point by Sly is up and good. And the lead is up to 18 now. Joey slide out a kick off after the touchdown. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. There's Tyler Lockett and the rest of his Seattle teammates coming out for the next possession. Last drive, the touchdown, four catches. Really good. He was. They were not good on the other side trying to stop him. What do they need to do? Well, this is where the entire staff has to get involved because we always focus on the defensive coordinator. But he needs help from other people with their eyes and their expertise, and he needs to listen to them. And sometimes you just can't afford to wait on a drive and say, okay, let's get to the sidelines and start over. You need to find a way in the middle of that drive to start taking away what's hurting you. Yeah, in series adjustments, and how do you do that? Well, what you do is you listen to what everyone else is telling you, what they're seeing, the patterns that are developing, and maybe you just start running extra bodies to take away that particular player. Well, they certainly got dented with that first down run. So now they've got to be back on their heels a little bit as a defense. From the 31, here's the second down and six. Now it's Smith. 
This is Fant on the short completion. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. It's been a very one-sided game so far. They got to change what they're doing right now, don't they? You can't wait till the halftime speech to make an adjustment. No, you can't, because if you're doing it right, you're adjusting from series to series, and they need a big adjustment here to try to put some points on the board. Oh, everything falling apart now. Another one intercepted. Picked by Kendall Fuller. And he will bring this one back. An interception return for a commander's touchdown. An excellent play there, CD, on the pick six. And I, I think they, were they a nickel? Did they have an extra DB out there? Yeah, Brandon, I think they were in standard nickel, not the uh, Buffalo, as teams like to call it, meaning three safeties for big nickel. They just wanted to take away the quarterback's throwing lanes, and that's exactly what they did and came through with a big-time pick six. Sly on for the extra point. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Taken at the goal line. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. The Seahawks offense now. They get ready to come back onto the field. And not the first time that they're coming back out off of a turnover, but the last one really hurt Charles with that pick six. And it feels like the whole team's infected right now, doesn't it? It's not just been one person. It's kind of been a group effort where the mistakes have happened. Can they put that aside, kind of start over, and put together a nice drive? Now they'll start on the ground with Charbonnet. Fighting through, and he's got space. And this will be a Seahawks first down as he gets this up past the 30 to the 32. Exactly what they needed right there because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. To throw with Smith. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. It's another zone defense. It looks like it's open for possibilities, but they did a nice job patrolling the middle of the field and forcing an incompletion. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and 10. Geno now to throw. This is Fant on the short completion. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. And I don't think there's any question that this offense is going to need to hit on a few more plays like this. It's been a difficult first half for them, to say the least. And I do believe if they want to get back in this game, they need to start right now. It's kind of like making adjustments. If you try and wait until the half, it's probably too late. They need to get going right here. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line, lower than the defensive front. They moved them and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. From just shy of midfield, here's second and three. Smith now to throw. Left side, he finds Smith and Jigba. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. It'll be a pickup of four, good enough to earn him yet another first down. All that practice time came to fruition on that play. All those timing routes that they work on through training camp, OTAs, mini camp, and just regular season, they got it done on that one. An out cut, ball was delivered, and picked up the completion. Now they nearly sprung him that time as he takes this all the way down to the 37. 
11 yards there and a first down for Seattle. Good push up front and that run in between the tackles. Let's play the leverage game here. Offensive line just got lower than the defensive front, and they were able to get their pads on them and move them backwards and create space for their running back to roam. Now Gino on first down. That's complete to his running back, Dallas. Two yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. From the gun, here's Smith. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. The coverage was good, but I just wonder if they absolutely fooled the quarterback on that play. I think he was expecting something else. Ended up with nowhere to throw the football successfully. Out of the huddle now for play number nine on this drive. This is third down at eight. Smith. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sacked back at the 38. Call it a loss of four there on the sack. And speaking of the number four, it brings up fourth down now. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And that is no good. And they will remain well, well behind. Yeah, 55 yards is anything but a gimme. You've got to really concentrate on your leg swing and proper technique. This time, though, he's unable to convert. There's Terry McLaurin, such an exciting pass catcher as this offense comes out for their next drive, making his presence felt early in this one. First half, already over the century mark. How about the yards per completion, too? That's a pretty darn good number there. Number of catches, but he's shredding defense. Is getting big yardage with each and every one of them. A good starting spot for Washington as they come up first and 10 at the 45. Al now to throw it. Pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawk defense. And now time will be called here as Washington has an injured player down on the field. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. Let's go. Let's go. Let's run the road. Let's run the Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Here's Hal. That's going to be caught by Samuel. And down he goes at the 45 after a pickup of nine. Here's third and ten. Al, he'll look to throw it. Eluding the pressure right. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a halt. He'll wind up getting four yards there on his own, but it also brings up fourth down. And partner, I would guess that in his headset, he was hearing from his coach, it's third down, don't take a sack. And in this case, he's able to avoid the pressure and get out of there. He doesn't get the first down, but he does turn a possible loss into positive yardage. Tress Way on fourth down is sent out to punt. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. The Seahawks going to take over now late in this first half. Well, things for them, just to put it bluntly, man, it has been tough sledding here in the first half, facing that big deficit. The clock is dwindling now. Maybe if they can get something on the board here before intermission, they'll have at least a little momentum heading into the second half. On first down, it's Smith. 
They're complete to Smith and Jigba. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Now Smith. And this is incomplete. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and 10. Now Gino. Smith and Jigba with a grab. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. And six DBs on the field for Washington on third down. Smith. Inside the 30. And all the way in. Touchdown, Seattle. Jackson Smith and Jigba as the first half is winding down. And the Seahawks are able to cut into this lead in the final seconds of the first half. Well, this could be a big turnaround. They get the touchdown here in the final moments of the second quarter. And remember, Charles, they're going to get the ball to start quarter number three as well. So what you're saying is if they take the ball down to start the second half and score again, it could change the entire complexion of this game, couldn't it? Absolutely. Myers connects on the PAT, and that'll cut the lead down to 18. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. The Washington offense at the line and ready to roll. And with a three-score lead already, this is not time for a momentum change, so I'd imagine they'd be happy to just take this into the locker room. And he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. Tackle made there by Frank Clark. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we send you cross country to Orlando, Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, back to you too in just a bit. But first, welcome everyone to downtown Orlando and our EA Sports Halftime Report. This was an extremely one-sided first half. One team showed up ready to go. The other's been in a daze thus far, but there's still plenty of time left for this one to tighten up significantly. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Seahawks trailing, but they will have possession first here as we resume action in the third quarter. 
And no run back here as the third quarter will commence with a touchback. Here comes the Seahawks offensive unit. They'll have it first to begin the third. And you have to think, Charles, down three scores already. They need to play an almost perfect second half to have a solid chance. And that absolutely starts with finding some way to put together a touchdown drive here. They need to be smart, fast, efficient, get the ball into the end zone, and do it again multiple times in order to have a chance to win this game. Left side complete to lock it. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. He was unable to shake free there. They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. And that was a heck of a play there on the outside. Partner, sometimes I think on a play like this as a corner, you've got to think to yourself, all I've got to do is slow him down so others can come over and support. But in this case, he said, forget that. I've got this. Sorry you had to make the run for nothing, fellas. And from the 25, they worked this to the 29, a gain of four. Another modest gain there on that one. And I think, Charles, you can probably pin part of the deficit on a failure on their part to really get this ground game established. Yeah, they've really struggled to be multidimensional in this one, haven't they, partner? Because they have to be extremely one-dimensional now if they hope to get back into this game. They'll have to do it by throwing the football and hope to have success through the air. Now Smith. And he's going to be intercepted for the third time thus far. And to the 40-yard line, that's where the return stops. Tough when they're first drive of the third quarter, throw an interception, and now a chance that they could be an even a bigger hole if they can convert this into points. Yeah, but how good do you feel if you're that defensive coordinator right now? Because you just know that the head coach looked at him and said, turn him loose, big man, and he'd be able to take a few extra chances playing with this type of a lead, and boy, it paid off. First possession of the second half now for Washington. They had the big halftime lead. Their defense just helped them out further by forcing the turnover, so things are starting to look pretty rosy. They certainly are, but they've got to be careful about getting complacent, though. They still need to go out and run their offense efficiently. On oh, first and ten, it's Robinson. And a pretty good run there as he gets seven down to the 33. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Second down and three. Again, it's Robinson. And he'll go down at the 28. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. The way things have gone in this one, the running game's been something of an afterthought, and that's not been too bad for them, has it? Yeah, the offensive returns have been good, but I guess we figured he and the ground game would be a bit more involved. First down, Hal to throw. That's to the sideline and incomplete. Was trying to get it to Terry McLaurin, and it's second down. The play fake, and now here's how to throw it. His throw caught right around the six. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the five at the six. A good pick up there, a 22. And remember, this drive started off following the turnover. And they've taken no time working their way down the short field. A nice connection there, and now they're looking at a first and goal. They'll run with Gibson. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Commanders. Antonio Gibson, a six-yard touchdown run. And the Commanders are able to stretch out their lead. And maybe that's the magic touch right there. They didn't use him at all in the first half, at least running the football. But here they entrust him with some work down in the red zone. And he responds. One carry, one touchdown. Defense. Extra point by Sly is up and good. And they open the lead up now to 25. Joey Sly. 
Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. Dallas now to return it from his end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. And out now come the Seahawks. Well, it's a game that they would rather probably forget about, at least to this point, Charles. And one reason is turnovers. The turnover on the last drive, they had the issue in the first half as well. And that's really, unfortunately for them, helped to put this game out of reach. And you know they won't want to admit it to themselves, but we know that winning the game is pretty much out of the picture now. So their bottom line is how do they play a clean game the rest of this one, right? Take care of the football, no more turnovers, and see how that works. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. And that run was memorable for only one reason. There's absolutely no place to run with the football. No gaps, no creases, no gain. Here's second and 10. Sticking with Walker on second down. Now this will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. Well, this defense, they've got the four-score advantage, and you can see why they continue to bottle up the run game, and really they've just been sharp at all facets here in this one, CD. Yeah, they've kept that offense in check the entire game, and I think it's been led by what you just talked about, that defensive front, which has not allowed them to run the football and establish control of the line of scrimmage. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A big gain of 31 on third down. And this offense needed something to try and seize the momentum a little bit, and that might have been exactly what they needed. Now they have a chance to go downfield and score and cut into the lead. Walker now on first and 10. And he'll work down inside the 45. Now that ground game just continues to struggle to really get any momentum in this ball game, Charles. And I mean, you're at the point here, third quarter, down four scores, probably going to have to put it in the air. Oh, no question about it. So that's your only chance, your only opportunity. But think of the pressure you just put on your offensive line, because if you're a pass rusher, you're not even thinking about them running the football. All you're doing is getting into that sprinter stance and going after the quarterback. And now on third down, they'll need to get it to the 36 to pick up the first. They'll fake the handoff. Now Smith. And this one incomplete. And another throw that really could have been, maybe should have been intercepted. That would have been number four. Instead, it's fourth down. Well, he's smart enough to avoid the taunting rule, but I'll guarantee he quietly has told them, you might want to stop coming after me downfield because I just broke up another pass and took away a big shot that you were trying to succeed with. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds, and they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. The Washington offense set to take over. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And he'll find some room to get this up to about the 14. Tariq Woolen in on the stop. Not a huge play, but I think they're more than happy with how it turned out. Don't be surprised to see them revisit that call because there was a lane there for more than just five yards. Put it in your back pocket and break it out when you need it later. Out of the gun, it's Howell. The throw on the run, but that's going to be incomplete. I think he's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. Now they go play action with Hal. 
And oh, that's going to wind up incomplete. Nearly their first pick of the game, but it does bring up fourth down. Coverage was awfully tight there on third down. They actually closed off all the passing lanes, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. Here's Tressway now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Now a fair catch signaled for and made right about the 43-yard line. Now call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. Now Smith and the Seahawks going to come up first and 10 at their own 44. Hands it to Walker to begin the series. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Here's second and seven. Sticking with Walker on second down. And they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. It's a loss of four. Now third down. Unfortunately for you, you've been around me for a little while now, so you know me as well as anyone and how I look at a game. I don't ever advocate abandoning anything, but in this case, I'm going against my own thought process. You've got to change it up. you got to start throwing it around a little bit, finding ways to try and move the ball because... Keeping on the ground just isn't working for them. Yeah, maybe get him the ball out of the passing game. A swing pass outside or something, just something to vary it up. That's an excellent job right there on third down. Like any defense, you never want to let them get anything started. And that would have been a first down. Instead, you saw the contact on time, no penalty. And before this drive could get wings, it's fourth down. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. So out comes Washington's offense to take over. Now these guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that will bring up second down. At the 26-yard line. And how will throw it. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. As soon as he leaked out and began his route, someone on the defensive side broke with him and arrived just in time to separate him from another reception. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Back to throw, Howell. Sets up the screen to Robinson. Room past the 35. And he's going to have a commander's first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. For as many sacks as this defense has, you can understand their willingness to try and get upfield and get another. So what a really smart play call here to use their aggression against them. Go with the screen, and they're able to get the first down. And McLaurin, the motion man right. And he'll get it here on the touch pass. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. A well-executed 22-yard gain. And just a simple tap pass, but it pays off in a big way. And sometimes the simple stuff causes the most problems for a defense because there's a breakdown in communication there. 
When that receiver goes behind the line of scrimmage and it looks like he's going in motion, someone either has to go with him or he has to be passed off to another defender. Somehow they didn't get that communicated well and it turned into a nice play. And a defensive back, Jamal Adams, in on the stop. Sometimes you're aligned perfectly and the play comes to you and sometimes you got to cover some ground to go make the play as we just saw there. We saw a great, great example of perseverance right there on that play. Got to be careful. They might want to throw one over his head as this game progresses. He throws and he hits the slam route to Thomas. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 29-yard line. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. So first and 10, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. Howell's throw taken in by Samuel. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Well, up big, but still not hesitating to take some shots downfield, CD. I guess they really want to hammer home their dominance in this one. Yeah, that much is apparent, partner. If they keep completing throws like that, they'll keep that gap awfully wide as they've established already. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Now how? And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. We sit in quarter number three out in Seattle, a second and ten now. And once more, Hal back to the air. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. They haven't been able to stop them so far this series, but getting a nice little stand from their defense now. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Throwing here, Howell. And looking for McLaurin, but this is intercepted. Picked up by Trey Brown. And the Seahawks are going to take over once again, and they'll have it at their own eight-yard line. But to be blunt, not a whole lot has gone right for this defense in this ball game. But that's something right there, still in the third quarter. It would, it would take something around miracle territory for a comeback, but maybe that's a start, Charles. It certainly is, and they're definitely showing that there's some fight still left in them. Hasn't been a banner day, but they're trying their best to put that disappointment behind them and find ways to make plays. Here's Walker to start the drive. And he'll take this one up to about the 13. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right. He's pretty much been completely neutralized. Second and five. A shotgun snap for Smith. This complete to Lockett. They follow up the gain of five by only getting one there on second down. The commanders bringing out the nickel package on third down. Out of the gun, handoff to Dallas. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Geno out of throw. 
And this is going to fall to the ground incomplete. That very nearly their fourth pick of the game. Instead, second down. Yes, sir. How about an out of boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and ten. Throwing now is Gino. It's caught. Lock it. And he's upended after a gain of four up to the 25-yard line. Here's third and six. Here's Smith. Setting up the screen here. This is Walker. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sense that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. Now Gino on first down. On the slant, here's Smith and Jigba. So the completion good for six yards, and it'll be second down. Nothing flashy there, the slant to the slot. Oh, and the frustration for the defensive guys, because it's a quick play, and you know it's going to be a bang-bang play in terms of the throw and the catch, and then he's able to absorb the contact and complete it. They'll come up on a second and four now from the 40-yard line. Throwing again is Smith. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. This offense has converted two third downs on this drive already. This is third and four. Throwing is Smith. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down by about three yards or so as they wind up getting seven there on third and four. Continuing to steadily move the ball down the field. Not big play after big play, but these moderate gains getting him first downs. And you know what they add up to, right? If you continue that pace and you continue to move it downfield, they add up into six points. That's exactly what you're looking for. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, he certainly didn't like what he saw at all from the coverage on his primary reads, and he didn't even have any luck trying to get back to his safety valve. Give defense a credit. Coverage was in lockdown mode everywhere. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and ten. Now Gino. That to the right sideline, and it falls incomplete. And now offensively, it's third and ten, and I'm just thinking to myself, actors always say, what's my motivation before a big scene? Right now, the play caller's thinking, what have I done before that's worked well that I can go to right now? Yeah, because they were pretty successful in the first half scoring points. Haven't done anything so far here in the second half. And the Washington pressure gets to him, and he will go down. That's Deron Payne with a sack that time. Oh, he's made him work for over half the game now. He's been the artful Dodger back there, but there it is. Finally, they get to him for a sack and a big loss. Give credit to the defense for their tenacity to finally hang with it and get him down. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Here we go on fourth, Smith. And it's incomplete, they cannot convert, and they turn it over. Pete Carroll rolled the dice, but it didn't work out. And Washington will take control of the football in great field position. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. It doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant. Historically, this is such a tough, loud venue, but you can hear a pin drop right now. A lot of fans long gone, not used to seeing a lopsided score like this. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. 
Well, they'll take that every time with a lead. First down, fourth quarter, getting eight yards. You love that. They will take it, and you have to ask the defensive guys, why did you give it? I mean, you know the situation. You're down, have to stop them, have to get the football back, but eight yards on first down puts them back on their heels. Hal's throw complete to Dotson. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. First target, first catch, and a first down. Partner, I know we're still in the afternoon slate here. Some primetime games still on the docket, but it's going to be tough to top this effort. What an offensive performance we have seen. They have been unstoppable from the moment we began this game, and they're not holding back. They're still throwing the football here in the Ford. They certainly are, and let me tell you something. If you're old school, you don't like this at all, but in today's football, you just go ahead and savor it. Watch a team execute at a high level. Doesn't matter what the scoreboard says. Now a second and six. Al now to throw it. And that one's going to come up a little short. It's incomplete. Well, their passing attack, even though that one was incomplete, has been really sharp in this one. It's resulted in a lot of touchdowns, and it looks like they're not going to stop throwing the football until the very end of this one. Well, that will certainly make everyone involved on offense pretty happy because that gives them all a chance to pad their stats a bit. But as far as the actual need, you and I both know they can just run this clock out because this one, it was over a long time ago. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. Not too many missteps in the red zone thus far. He was going for his fifth touchdown pass. His man couldn't shake free there, but boy, you know he's going to take another shot before this one's over. Yeah, exactly, because you know three is good, four is excellent. You get five, that's a whale of a game. Sly able to put this one through, and that will extend their lead even further. Well, he was a spectator for much of this game. This is his first field goal opportunity of the entire contest, but he's able to connect. Yeah, he had a pretty good seat to this one, didn't he? But let's face it, all kickers that you and I know, they want to contribute. They want their opportunity, and he seized his. After the made field goal, here's Sly to kick this one away. Dallas now to return it from his end zone. And now off to the races, down the right side. And he's going to take this all the way down inside the 40. Even after that big time return, it's not looking great for them today. But if nothing else, even if the miracle doesn't happen, they can turn to this play and say, hey, we can move forward. Maybe it's a building block for the rest of the season. And yeah, the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers. You would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're absolutely right about that, partner, because... They're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. Here's second and three. Smith. This one into the hands of Metcalf. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. Well, this game is certainly pretty well over. They can go ahead and mark it in the win column. But as a defense, they don't want to get so soft now that everybody just throws the ball all over the place against them, gets big yardage, and puts points on the board. They have pride, too, on that side of the ball. Up the middle, here's Walker. And boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back, those are the ones you focus on and want to take away. And they've done that pretty successfully in this game five yards now it's third and five and 
They run again with Walker. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. Kim Walker, a 16-yard touchdown run. And the Seahawks get a small measure of revenge as they cut into this fourth quarter deficit. We see this a lot on third and short yardage, especially down here in the red zone. They're going to sell out to stop the run, try and hold them to a field goal. But once the running back gets past the first wave, the resistance can evaporate after that. And he not only picks up the first, but he takes it all the way into the end zone. So still lots of work left to do, but here comes the onside kick. And this is going to be covered up by Washington. The risk reward of the onside kick, when you don't get it, the risk comes out to play, and here they gave up great field position. And that's the key to everything, because you're trying your best to press advantages when you have them, and field position leads you to that type of play calling. And whether you want to blitz or whether you want to throw the ball deep, those types of things, now that they've given up that type of field position, the advantage has switched to their opponent. Straight ahead, it's Robinson. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Here's a second and eight. On the counter, this is Robinson. And they get him behind the line, so that short gain on first down quickly negated. It's a loss of two, now third down. When this offense gathers to watch the tape, they're going to like a lot of what they saw. They put up big numbers, but they might fast forward through that last play. Oh, there won't be any fast forwarding, partner. I've sat in those sessions before. You end up spending more time on the bad plays than you do on the good ones. That's just the nature of coaches. But I know sitting in that room, when you've had a big game, the night that they've had, you don't want to hear that. You just want to focus on the good stuff. Here's Tressway now, as he's on to punt for Washington. That'll be out of bounds, and how good was that? They'll say the three-yard line, that's where they spot it. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. We said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD, but unfortunately, the second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing. And, partner, they do have some good news, though. This one is getting close to being over, and they can try and hit the reset button starting tomorrow. It'll go down as a gain of six at its second down. They're giving those short little routes, tackled him in bounds, too. They're just not wanting to get beat over the top. Yeah, and if you can't really get downfield, take the short routes. But now you've got to have guys who can actually break tackles and increase those gains. And yeah, they're going to speed things up here. Now Smith. And Walker with it over the middle. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. Smith going to throw on third and one. Oh, had his hands on it, couldn't bring it in. Pretty symptomatic of how this game's been going. I think this is what this game's become now. Just go deep, see if we can get something to go our way. Yeah, not the most creative or most inventive play call there, but not much has worked for them throughout this game. They're almost at a loss about what to dial up. 
And here's Dixon to punt now as he gets this one away. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36 yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Commanders will take over with a first and 10. Howell and the Commanders come up now first and 10 at their own 37. He'll start with a give to Robinson. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. On second down, another shot for Robinson. And he'll push this forward only to about the 42-yard line. Like any team, they would have loved to have had more yards on that run, but it looks like they just want to get to the two-minute warning and see what they want to do after that. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Commander's football as we get back to it. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to have a Commander's first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And this is what it's been like all game long. Guys running free in the middle of the field. This defense has just had no answer for this passing game. And that's another good hook up there. Handoff now to Robinson. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. 57 yards rushing for him now to this point. Playing as a 3-4 front is really challenging for offensive linemen because they can do so many different things. But when you're running the football, if you can handle the nose tackle up front and then maybe a guard can slide up to the second level and block a linebacker, that's when you have success running the football. On second down, another shot for Robinson. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. Charles, a lot of happy faces heading into the tunnel as this one ends, and understandably so. Not only did they get the win, but boy, their offense was on fire in this ball game. And partner, I have no idea what the top speed is on all those high-end sports cars. What's the top gear you can get into? This offense, they certainly were there in this one, huh? Everything clicking for them in this contest, the kind of performance that they're going to cherish.